Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Barrasso. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you've heard from everyone here, Israel is one of our nation's strongest allies. Uh, since October 7th, the world has seen the terror and violence inflicted by Hamas, and all of us strongly condemn Hamas's invasion of Israel, which involved killing and wounding thousands of Israeli civilians. Americans were also among those injured and killed and taken hostage by Hamas. Uh, as Israel fights these terrorist attacks, the United States remains unwavering. You've heard that here today as well in our commitment to Israel's security. With the incredible challenges facing Israel, it's vital that we have the right person serving as the U.S. Ambassador to Israel. And I think it's especially true in light of President Biden's repeated failed policies that I see as failed in the region. Today's nominee, I believe, seems to be the wrong person for this important job. And as Secretary of Treasury in the Obama administration, he helped negotiate the disastrous Iranian nuclear deal. In fact, he went about bag bragging about the flawed deal to American people. Secretary of Treasury, he unlocked a lot of Iranian assets and uh, let them have their money. He also he really was an ATM to the Iranian Ayatollah. No, no one is going to forget the pallets of cash going to Iran, which was the largest state sponsor of terrorism. We know how they use the money. The Secretary of Treasury, he helped orchestrate $1.7 billion in cash to be flown in an unmarked cargo plane, cash directly to Iran. Also oversaw the $400 million ransom payment to Iran in exchange for American hostages. The massive influx of cash, ultimately a direct deposit into Iran's terrorism account. Additionally, in 2016, he defended the Obama administration's unwillingness to veto a UN Security Council resolution that was seen as an anti-Israel resolution. Congress, in a bipartisan way, disagreed with that position of the administration. In fact, we overwhelmingly passed a bipartisan resolution objecting to it and demanding that it be repealed. So, so here we are. These decisions, these actions have serious consequences, and I believe they have emboldened terrorist organizations around the globe, and that the American people and the Israeli people both deserve something different. So, Mr. Liu, Hamas soldiers have re reportedly been found with documents detailing their plans to target schools, target civilians during the raid. Another document directed Hamas units to kill as many as possible, as well as capture hostages. Four, over 4,000 dead, 31 Americans among those killed, others taken hostage. We've had the debate about how to best get them home. In terms of the American citizens, who's responsible for the, 32, the 31 Americans who have died in this conflict? Yeah, Senator, um, I, as Secretary of the Treasury, also uh, sanctioned Hamas and uh, took actions to try and stop the flow of money to Hamas. It's not a new thing that Hamas is a terrorist organization. I earlier offered some views that would challenge some of the characterization you just made of how the JCPOA did or didn't affect Hamas. The sad reality is Iran was supporting Hamas before JCPOA. They supported it during the period of maximum pressure. They will spend their first dollars on evil. They're not going to stop doing this, and Iran is a malign force. Iran provided the arms, they provided training, whether they were involved in anything more proximate, I am not inside any circles of intelligence to know. Public information suggests that it may not have been as clear. I, if confirmed, I will keep my eye on Iran as a force that is hostile to Israel's existence. They are, want to push Israel into the sea, and we can't let that happen. Well, you know, the interesting point is that the failure of this administration to enforce the Iranian oil sanctions helped finance Hamas and other Iranian proxies. It's how you can stop the money, but a lot, we have allowed, this administration has allowed a lot of money to get there. Iran is the home of the world's third largest reserves of crude oil. It uses the revenue from its oil exports to support its repression and terrorist activities. The more money they have, the more activities we're going to see, in spite of all efforts to block it along the way. Uh, I repeatedly raise concerns about the impact of this administration refusing to enforce existing sanctions on the energy sector. In an attempt to convince Iran to rejoin this terrible Iranian nuclear deal, it seems that the president did relax sanctions enforcement on Iran to the point that Iran generated about $80 billion in oil revenue under, the, under this administration. 
Uh, Oman and Iran have signed a variety of deals in the oil and gas sector. China's state-owned refineries and private companies are buying up 1.2 million barrels of Iranian oil every day, and we're allowing that to happen. The Iranian regime is getting hundreds of billions of dollars to fund Hamas, Hezbollah, other terrorist proxies. So, so what, then why has this administration failed to fully enforce sanctions on entities involved in these illicit transactions with Iran, given the fact that every dollar they make they're going to use in a bad way. Well, Senator, first of all, um, the monies that uh, w were released um, were subject to being used only for humanitarian purposes for food and medicine. That was an arrangement reached in the last administration, not the current administration. So it's not just a, a new issue. Uh, and the intel that I was privy to back in the day when I had access to internal discussions suggested very clearly that um, the unmet needs were pressing and would need to be met. And that if there was leakage, it would be on the margin. It wouldn't change the direction of Iran's support. That's not a great answer. I, I, I'm not happy until they stop supporting people who commit the acts of butchery that we saw just days ago. And I have to tell you, as somebody who grew, I, I, I'm an observant Jew. I, I, I observe our festivals including the sad ones. There's days of the year when we read dirges about what human beings can do to each other that I never took literally until this month. I've never seen in my lifetime human beings treat other human beings face to face, eyeball to eyeball, the way Jews were slaughtered because they were Jews. That's at my core, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Booker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Liu, it's very 